The world's leading streaming company, Netflix, came out with earnings after the market closed this evening. And so far, investors don't like what they see. Shares are down between 4 and 5%. What does it mean for shareholders? Let's spend the next 10 minutes trying to figure that out. My name is Brian Stoffel. As of the time of this recording, I do not own shares of Netflix. And I want to give a shout out to FinChat.io for sponsoring today's video. You're going to see a whole lot more from them in just a minute. So this was Netflix's first quarter of 2024. Depending on where it opens tomorrow, it'll be between $250 and $260 billion company on the top line. Good news. Revenue is up 15% to about $9.4 billion. That was ahead of Wall Street's and management's guidance. Same story on the bottom line, but even bigger growth to $5.28 per share, well ahead of Wall Street's estimates and management's guidance. Now, the big news that investors have always looked at is subscriber growth. Expectations were for 4.8 million new subscribers. For Netflix, reality was much better than that at 9.3 million, which might make you wonder, well, why are shares trading down? We'll get to that in a minute. But to figure out where all that growth came from, we can actually go to finchat.io to figure that out. And shouldn't be a big mystery why this is a tool that I use every day for hours every day. If you would like a 15% discount to this tool, click the link in the show notes below. Here's something really neat that you can do with it. If you go down to this tab right here called segments and KPIs, you can find a whole bunch of things. And what I've highlighted here are the key performance indicators of membership additions for different geographies. Now, the company just came out and released these numbers less than two and a half hours ago, and already this is in the system. And what's neat is, is then I can look at this and then I can see, all right, where did those additions come from? And I see 2.5 million new subscribers came from the United States and Canada. Uh, with the exception of last quarter, it's one of the best quarters they've had since the middle of the pandemic. 2.9 million from Europe, the Middle East, and Asia. 1.7 million from Latin America, a little bit more muted growth there. And 2.2 million coming in from the Asia Pacific region. Again, with the exception of the last quarter, that's the most that they've had since the end of 2021. Overall, that's pretty good news. What happened with margins during the quarter? Well, gross margins expanded meaningfully. Operating margins expanded meaningfully. Net margins expanded by over 50% to almost 25% uh, net profit margin. Free cash flow was flat, but net income was up significantly. We'll get to why that was the case in just a second. Balance sheets upside down. That's the price of doing business in the streaming industry. Let's look at the income statement. You had 15% revenue growth, but the cost of that revenue, the cost you did, takes to make new movies like Leo uh, was only up 4%. So when revenue is up 15% and the cost of that to make that is only up 4%, well, that improves your gross profits. When your operating expenses are also up less than your revenue of just 7%, well, that's really good. So what kind of leverage can you get on 15% revenue growth? Well, in this case, the answer is 54% growth in operating income, which also helps a 79% jump in net income. And look at this, the bay number of basic shares outstanding was down 3%. So overall, this is all very good news for Netflix, the company. We'll get to why the stock might be down in a minute. But again, I wanted to touch on why free cash flow and net income were so different. Now, the company amortizes whatever it spends on its content over a certain number of years, and this is where you can correct for it. In the first quarter of last year, Netflix spent about $2.5 billion on new content. This quarter, it spent about $3.7 billion. That's a lot more. Now, that's amortized over time, so that difference doesn't show up all at once, but on the cash flow statement, it does. That's why free cash flow was pretty much unchanged from the same time last year. And you also see that the company spent $2 billion repurchasing uh, shares during the quarter. Now, management offered guidance. They said that they expect about 16% revenue growth uh, in the current quarter, which is the same percentage that Wall Street's expecting. It is a little bit below the actual dollar amount Wall Street's expecting. That could be part of the pullback on the bottom line. Strong results were expected. Management said there's three things that they need to focus on if they can be sustainably growing. Number one is to improve the variety and quality of the entertainment. That could be expensive. That could be one of the things that some on Wall Street are worried about, although the company did say its operating margins would be better than they had expected at the end of the previous quarter. Number two, they want to innovate on product on, and marketing. Um, basically, you know, maybe hoping to get more out of their marketing dollars by having viral hits. 
And number three, which I think will probably be the most important is tapping into additional revenue pools, in particular advertising. Really keep an eye on that as a driver for revenue growth starting next year. So for the full year, they did provide some guidance. They said that they expect revenue will grow between 13 and 15%. If we take the midpoint of that guidance, that's about where Wall Street is expecting growth to be. You'll notice that that number is a little bit below where Wall Street was hoping for, which also might help explain some of the reasoning why the stock might be down right now. So what you watch moving forward, number one is subscribers, the growth of subscribers, but it is worth mentioning, management said that they will stop sharing new subscriber additions soon. Why? Because they've got all these different plans and all these different tiers of payments, and that doesn't totally capture the value that they're creating now. So something to watch moving forward, but it'll get less important over time. Number two, free cash flow. They've got to prove that they can grow that free cash flow at the same time that they're trying to improve the quantity and the quality of their programming because that's expensive. Number three, and this is going to become more important moving forward, is that advertising tier. And number four is page sharing. I'm recording this before I've had a chance to listen to the conference call. I'm assuming that the page sharing is working and is one of the big reasons that those subscriber additions far outpaced expectations. Overall, I believe that the moat is slightly expanding around the business and the thesis is on track. But what about valuation? For that, we head back to finchat.io. And so I go here and I want to close all these. And what I'm only curious about now is where is the company's free cash flow? So I can pull up free cash flow right here. It's showing quarterly. I want it to show annually. They had about $6.9 billion. We know they only added about $20 million in free cash flow from the same time last year. So we'll call it $6.95 billion in free cash flow. And we can go on over to this reverse discounted cash flow calculator and we type in our ticker symbol, Netflix. And let me just check again. We said 6.95 billion. So we go 6950. We give it a terminal growth rate of, let's say, 2.5%, a discount rate of 10%, which basically means what kind of growth is assumed in the stock price for Netflix to be a, a market meeting, market matching return over the next 10 years. How much does that free cash flow need to grow? And so now we just have to make these two numbers match. Well, 22 is faster than it needs. How about 20? That's faster. How about 18? We're getting closer now. How about 17? How about 16? With the, the way that shares are down after hours, I'm guessing what we're saying is free cash flow needs to grow 15 to 16% moving forward. Now, how reasonable is that? Well, again, with FinChat.io, there's a couple things that we can do to really look at that. So remember, 15 to 16% growth. What I can do now is I can go to analysis and I can go to estimates and I can say, here's free cash flow. How much is free cash flow expected to grow moving forward? So it's actually expected to take a slight dip during this year and then start growing again moving forward. The mean estimate is that it will dip about 5% in this year and then it will grow 30 and 23% moving forward. So if you take all that, a 15 to 16% growth in the company's uh Free cash flow does seem somewhat reasonable moving forward. The thing is, it's got to carry that out over 10 years. Will that work? Will it not? I think what it all is going to depend upon are really just two key things. One, can they sustainably create quality content that's not so expensive that it eats up that free cash flow? That's number one. And number two, are they able to pull in more viewers, more subscribers using that advertising tier and really generate enough cash to make it worth it. If you know the answer to those two questions, you know where Netflix will be going moving forward. So that's my take on Netflix's earnings. Remember to use these tools at Minchat.io. Click the link in the show notes below. Let me know what you think in the comments section. We'll check back on this one in 90 days. And until then, Brian out.